In this lesson, we'll continue our review of reading test seven, section one, passage two. We're still on the second passage. This is the social science passage. If you recall, if you watch these videos in sequence, these two scholars were arguing that advancements in technology had resulted in a decline in jobs. And there was lots of detail in this. And then toward the end, we had this sort of a counter argument, not a true counter argument by this Lawrence Katz, who said that he wasn't convinced of this trend and he, he said that um, we need more time and, and new jobs are always created and he wasn't convinced about this theory that resulted in this um, this increase in, in productivity but not a commensurate increase in jobs. All right, so we are on question 16 and this is the beginning of a two-part question, 16 and 17. So we always wanna scan down and we see here's 16 and here's 17 because they're two different pages just spliced together. Which of the following best characterizes Katz's attitude toward di digital technology? Again, we, we sort of know this. This is sort of the what I call the not a true counter argument, but we know he wasn't totally convinced. And it's bound between 68 and 92. So we're looking for some type of evidence about his attitude toward today's digital technologies. And so it's 68. And that's really, I think, at the beginning where he was introduced for the first time. So here's Katz. He's done extensive research. He displaced skills while it take decades. We have never run out of jobs. There is no long-term trend. So we keep reading here. He doesn't dismiss the notion that there is something different. The question, he says, is whether economic history will serve as a useful guide. Will the job disruptions caused by technology be temporary as the workforce adapts, or will we see a science fiction scenario in which automated processes and robots with superhuman skills take over broad swath of human jobs. Though Katz expects the historical pattern to hold, it is generally a question, he said, if technology dis disrupts enough, who knows what will happen? So he's really kind of uncertain about it, right? He, he says that he expects the pattern to hold, but he's really not totally certain about it. And so that's really his opinion. Again, this is the two-part question. And let's take a look at the answers for 16 and 17. He is alarmed about countries increasing reliance. He is unconcerned. He is uncertain, right? Uncertain, that's where we found at the very end. It was C, and that was right at the end, right? And so whenever you do these, you know it's bound by six, between 68 and 92. And just to review, you're just looking for some evidence of his attitude, right? Who knows what will happen? That is really just another way of saying he is uncertain about the future. And this is typical, what I call paraphrase questions. All right, let's take a look at 18. 18 is a vocab and context. What does range in the context of the passage mean? So let's take a look at question or line 83. All right, so 83, it's right here. Something different about today's digital technology, something that could even affect and could affect an even broader range of work. All right, so range here, this is sort of like a large swath, right? A range, a, a lot, it, it covers an extensive uh, field. All right, let's take a look. Uh, scope, right? I was trying to think of the word to predict, but it's a, it covers um, extensive different uh, sections, right? It's a large scope. It's not distance or region. It's, that's what it means in this context. All right, let's take a look at 19. Oh, so we have a graph here. Usually in the writing and the reading, there'll be one passage or maybe two with graphs. Let's take a look at 19. According to figure one, which of the following years shows the widest gap between the percentages of productivity and employment? And that's what in the graph, remember, we had, right, that's figure one. So we want the largest gap and we can pretty much see the largest gap is at the very end, right? It's 2013. So that was a pretty easy question if you just look at the, the figure, right? It is D. And let's take a look at 20. Which statement is best supported by figure two? It's a lot of scrolling here. All right, so figure two, we see output per employed person in manufacturing as factories have become more automated in different countries. And so we see generally the trend is increasing for productivity. So let's take a look at the choices. The country with the greatest job growth and input 
from 1960 to 1990 was Germany. Japan experienced the smallest increase. So these are all specific about countries. I would kind of scan through these. Of the three countries, the United States had the greatest output or, oh, let's take a look and see. Each of the three countries experienced an increase in its output from 1960 to 2011. So let's take a look at that, each of the three countries. Yes, okay, and this one, again, I didn't want to keep scrolling back and forth. I wanted to try and figure it out. But the ones that are specific, if you don't find a general answer like we did, which is definitely right, in 20, right, I just kind of scanned through these. We didn't, if you didn't find a, one that was definitely right, and then I would then take the time to look at these specific ones to find true statements, if that makes sense. It'll just save time instead of analyzing these each and then you know this could be D and you've already gone through and disproved three before finding the general one that is correct. All right, last question 21. Which additional information if presented in two, figure two, would be most useful in evaluating the statement in 57 to 60? Let's take a look at the statement in 57 to 60. All right, so here's 57. And this is still the argument of those two scholars it's the great paradox of our error, he says. Productivity is at record levels. Innovation has never been faster. And yet, at the same time, we have a falling median income and fewer jobs. Okay, falling median income and fewer jobs. Oops. So which of the following would be helpful to for that statement? And if you notice, when we look at figure two, all right, so we have, all we have here is output per worker and he's saying that we have fewer jobs right there's there's nothing in there about how many jobs and we have falling median income and all we really have here is output per worker right we have no evidence about fewer jobs because we would need some evidence about how many people were employed and if we look at the choices for 21 the median income of employees as it compares across all three countries in a single year, number of people employed in factories, the types of organizations at which output employed, or the kinds of manufacturing. So B right away looks good, the number of people employed, right? If we're making a claim, or he's making a claim that there's fewer jobs, right? All we have is the output. So the number of jobs would definitely be helpful if he, to substantiate that claim. And so the answer for this one is B.